what is good Tesla family it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock and what you should be looking after for the future I'm also going to break down what's going on with the overall market by looking at the news the data the technicals and how it may affect Tesla for tomorrow I'm also going to break down why tomorrow is going to be a very crazy day because we have quadruple witching which just means that millions of options are going to be expiring at the same time so I will break down how that could affect Tesla for tomorrow as well now before I break anything down before I get into any more details i do have to mention a couple of things before starting firstly i'm not a financial planner make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this it not only benefits me it benefits the entire tesla community as a whole and the last thing is if you guys can please check out the mumu link down below and in the description if you sign up for Mumu, the link down below, and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed 7 free stocks, and 5 out of those 7 free stocks could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer, the offer ends in just 2 weeks, check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So when it comes to Tesla, this thing was up about 2% for the day, and in my previous video I told you all that Tesla would likely try to push up to fill this gap, and it would either fill the gap today or get stopped at gap resistance, which was just at about almost 185 or very close to there. That's almost exactly where Tesla got rejected today, and we did still close in the green, but I do believe Tesla has a lot of potential to try to continue to push to the upside. I'm going to break down exactly why, but I first want to remind you all that yesterday I told you, you have to be prepared for anything firstly. I told you that there was about a 30 to 35% chance the market could actually crash from where we were based off the news and fundamentals, which are not technically aligning with the rally we're seeing. But I also told you that there was a 65 to 70% chance the market would hold or even squeeze going into Thursday and Friday, get a really nice short squeeze because of quadruple witching. And what this basically means is there are a bunch of different kinds of options expiring at the exact same time, which is going to be on Friday tomorrow. We have currently 381,000 calls in the money with almost 1.4 million out of the money and about 500,000 puts in the money with 2.7 million out of the money with max pen at 396 and a 1.85 put to call ratio, which means that the majority of institutions and people have puts expiring for tomorrow. Now, what that means is the market makers, the ones who are actually on the opposite ends of the options, who play a very big role in manipulating the markets, they are simultaneously working with institutions and trying to pump the markets. Why are they doing this? Because they want to cause pain for the shorts. They're trying to squeeze the shorts because it benefits them. They not only hedged by when, when a lot of people bought the puts, they had to hedge by uh, not, not only selling shares, but also uh, they, were, they actually took the opposite position because they're the ones that actually sold the puts. They benefit by pushing the market up. And when they do this, they try to close this very close to max pain or even higher than max pain. And in my opinion, Based off the formation on SPY, the odds favor, they're going to try to push us more again tomorrow. And they're most likely going to succeed because today, you know, a lot of the shorts got annihilated and they pushed the market up because they're getting ready for tomorrow. They're in a very good position. They have the edge, the advantage, and they're most likely going to do it again. Now, please remember, there is some manufacturing and industrial production data coming out. Nothing way too significant, though. So I don't think there's a whole lot that could stop us from here. Uh, I also want to note that the European Central Bank gave us a 50 basis point rate hike from the European side. This could be challenging the Fed, but not necessarily like immensely, in my opinion, because they actually have a terminal rate that's a lot lower than that of the USA's. This means that just because they're doing 50 basis points, it does not mean that the you know Jerome Powell and the Fed have to do that because our banking situation is also quite different. It does affect them as well. But I want to just note that. Now, what is the Fed going to do in response to this? The odds do favor, in my opinion, 25 basis points. I don't think they should pause. I also don't think they should do 50 because of the current situation. I think they should just do something in the middle. But that does not rule out the possibility of them being a little bit more hawkish just in case because FOMC is next week. Also, what is helping the market a bit is, yes, banks are in a very tough, tough situation and we're continuing to see the risk of contagion and maybe even a bank run, a nationwide bank run as time goes on. It's a possibility, but it isn't confirmed just yet.
Now, a lot of these banks all over the world, especially in the U.S., are starting to get more and more support and more lifelines. It was just announced, I think, last night that Credit Suisse is going to borrow nearly $54 billion from the Swiss National Bank. This is not like put them out of the water or like save them necessarily, but it does give them a bit of a lifeline. We also saw something similar happen to SBD as the FDIC did sell assets to help them out. And we're likely going to see, you know, other banks come out and try to buy different banks, take on uh, the risk. In turn, it could actually benefit them for the longer term. Now, right now, however, there's still a very high risk for many banks out there. The banks are still in very, very tough situations because they are still losing lots of money as the interest rates go up. Now, in my opinion, as this all perpetuates, the fundamentals are telling me that the market is not in the right place. Because the market from a fundamental standpoint should be much lower than where we're you know, typically at, where we're currently at, I mean. And that just makes you uh, think about how in the market, fundamentals don't always align with where the stock prices are. All right, this is, does not mean the market has to crash immediately, but it does mean that there could be more downside to come in the future, maybe going into the next month or so. But for tomorrow specifically, like I said, we're going to still see a short squeeze. I just wanted to note what the fundamentals are telling us. Now for Tesla and its news, uh, VW actually just unveiled a new affordable electric vehicle. Uh, this is actually costing about 25,000 euros, euros or uh, 26,600 US dollars. Now, here's my take on this. When you see headlines like this, do not look at this as something that's bad for Tesla. Because remember, these companies that are releasing the news, their goal is to get as many clicks as possible. To do so, they have to include Tesla in the headline to get more views. So instead of saying VW did great by announcing an affordable vehicle, they have to bring Tesla into this. And that's what their intent is. I'm also saying this because I don't see this as a bad thing. I say this because Tesla has new models coming out. They have the Cybertruck, they have the Roadster. They're also going to unveil another model in the future. The new models will come out and they're going to be a hit anyways. Tesla is still doing well fundamentally. So I don't really take any offense to this or look at this as bad news for Tesla in any way, shape, or form. Could this mean more competition for them? Sure, but Tesla wants competition because demand is still relatively high. I also say this because when you look at the overall inventory levels, I know I go over this almost every day, but I'm just letting you know, currently, this is like up to date right now, the inventory levels for Teslas are relatively low. And what this means is people are still buying Teslas like crazy. Demand is still very high for them thanks to the price cuts and other factors. And as of right now, they're still in a relatively good place for earnings compared to other companies. When it comes to the news, we have a good piece of news that came out. The supercharger, uh, the new version came out and it's revealed to be twice as powerful. So once again, this is very awesome. Tesla did also mention the fact that they're going to be working very hard to give their users, their uh, people that are using the docks and the charging stations, even better times, a better experience and etc. Once again, very awesome, very good for Tesla, its company, and its people. When it comes to Tesla's overall data right now, I want to mention that we're actually seeing an increasing price pairs ratio. I think today it's going to be relatively flat, not move too much, because Tesla did move very closely with NASDAQ. But Tesla is getting hit with some stronger resistance where the gap is. It's actually trying to fight for it, and I do believe there's a good chance it's going to try to get there. Overall, Wolf Research did say, as I mentioned earlier, that they're not as bullish on Tesla as before. That did slow us down a bit yesterday, but it's not the end of the world. Tesla does tend to be kind of like uh, red for Thursdays, and yet we were actually green today. The good thing is we tend to do better on Fridays than Thursdays historically, as we're green about 49% of the time. And I think there's a good chance Tesla will try to be green for tomorrow. Also remember that we tend to push a lot during the third to fourth hours of the trading day. So I do believe it might take a little bit of time for Tesla to really push, but I do believe we have a lot of potential to do so. Finally, the short interest on Tesla has been declining a bit. We're starting to see lots of shorts starting to cover. And I believe that their uh, position and their trick right now is 
uh, as they're covering their short positions, Tesla is still fairly lower than where it was when it was in like the 220s and the 210s. So they still could be making a profit off of it. And when they're closing these positions, this is going to likely lead to more buying pressure for Tesla, more like uh, a volume that helps push it up. And that's why Tesla is actually pumping on relatively low volume. Volume was only like 110 million at the time of recording this. And I believe that this is a sign that once we get more buying pressure, especially because QQQ is pumping, it might actually help Tesla pump more. The short volume percentage has been on a big decline very recently. This tells me that the people getting ready to buy it are getting a bigger edge over the volume and short covering and other factors are now playing a bigger role in the price action. It's not like people are selling or like people are just like, you know, dumping the shares right now. Instead, it's like the opposite of that. And that's actually helping Tesla. So now I'm going to talk about the technicals. What's actually going on with the share price, given all the data I showed you. Looking at the hourly time frame on Tesla, this thing got stopped very close to where gap resistance was. So it's trying to fill the gap right here. There's a gap that formed, and it's actually going to take Tesla all the way up to about almost 188 if it fills it. And I believe Tesla has the potential to actually fill the gap very soon, maybe even tomorrow. I do believe it's most likely going to do it. We're getting closer and closer as the days go on. But I want to mention something else that's very important. Look at this right here. I have a Wyckoff accumulation schematic. This is the second version of the schematic. And I want you to look at the different phases and then compare this to SPY. And the reason for this is because this suggests that there's a high probability the market has more upside to come, especially for tomorrow, thanks to quadruple witching. The market makers look like they want to squeeze the shorts. And if you actually look at the charts, let me just close the MACD for the time being. This is what the chart looks like. All right, and I'm going to also hide the drawings. All right, look at this big decline on SPY. SPY was dumping and dumping and dumping all the way down here. This is our like selling climax. We get a really nice bounce, then we get the final major sell-off in the very early stages of this accumulation. This is very similar to this phase A going into phase B, where you have this big sell-off, selling climax, nice bounce, going into the sell test in phase B, which is where the ultimate bottom is, right? Very similar to this. Then you get a nice bounce, a nice bounce, which is what happens in like phase B followed by another big drop, which is going to be the last point of support as institutions start buying right here. And we did get lots of buying pressure right here as we start to see this thing pump a bit. And then we got a big pump afterwards. Well, that's very similar to this. Once you hit the sell test in phase B, you get a nice pump, come down for the last point of support into phase C. As the volume starts to increase, then you push up for the sign of strength, a big push up. This is almost like a cup and handle. It's very similar to it. And this is phase D from a Wyckoff perspective. It looks like we just entered phase D and we're getting ready for phase E. Wyckoff is telling us that the odds favor SPY might just continue and try to get all the way up to about 400 to 401. How is this going to happen? Well, the market's going to likely see another push up going into tomorrow. And the reason we pushed up today is once again because of quadruple witching. And this tells me that we're likely going to see most likely a continuation for tomorrow. I also want you guys to be prepared for anything because, like I said, fundamentals are not backing this move. So if we do turn bearish, just to prepare you guys, just in case, right? The next major support is going to be 393. If that fails, make sure you watch 390. Then we have like 387 or so. Now, if we're bullish, we need to actually break and hold above 396. If we break and hold that, we're most likely going to go for 400 to 401. Very important zone. We have a supply zone up here. What do I think is going to happen? As I mentioned before, I think we're most likely going to see SPY go for 400 to 401. For Apple, and I will get on with Tesla in a few minutes. Let me just go over a couple of these important ones. Uh, for Apple, we're actually, we actually hit this resistance and broke above it. We then ended up closing it right below it. That's around this 155 zone, very close to almost 156. I think Apple has the potential to actually continue in the accumulation and try to push for 157.5. If we could break this, we could get very close to 160. But I do have a target of about 157.5 for Apple. I think Apple's going to try to get to it. That's a very important resistance zone where Apple has been testing for quite a while. And I do believe it's very likely Apple's going to try to get all the way up there. On top of that, 
for the triple Q, this thing was even more bullish than I suspect. I thought this thing would stop around like 301 to almost 303. I didn't expect it to go all the way up to 307 today. And overall, look at the MACD on the daily. This is still bullish. There's no confirmation of the trend breaking. We made a very big move, and this is very strong. Now, if I was the market maker, if I wanted to squeeze shorts, I would likely try to push this thing even higher. The resistance of this thing is going to be around 309.27 or 309 or so, that, that zone right there. If we could break and hold 307, we're going to go all the way up to 309. And if we break 309, then the next zone is going to be between 311 to 313. We have major resistance all the way up here. Now, I believe the odds are favoring upside, and this is likely going to get dragged up by Tesla and Apple and other stocks out there. For the dollar index, I told you guys this thing looks like it might cool off a bit. My target was about 104.25. It actually bounced off 104.2. I think that this thing is going to likely trade sideways, maybe come a little bit lower to about 104.2. Overall, the MACD is slowing down. It's actually getting tighter. And on the daily, once again, we have a wide open MACD. It's going to likely start to slow down even more, in my opinion. And I have a feeling it's going to come all the way down to the 103s again. It could even come all the way down to 103.5, somewhere around those lines. And I do believe this downside in the dollar could be bullish for the stock market for the time being. I think the dollar also would have dropped even more if it wasn't for the European Central Bank and the move they made. But that's okay. There is likely more downside. The VIX right now has an MACD that's actually uh, getting smaller, it's getting tighten, it's it's high, tightening, excuse me, on the PPO, and it's very likely that this thing is going to retest 22.64. Why? Because of the market possibly pushing up more. And if we break below that, it's very likely it's going to come all the way down to 20 flat. That could actually happen over the next couple of days, but it's likely going to try to bounce somewhere around 20 or in the very low 20s in my opinion. So this does tell me we, we might have a little bit more downside on the VIX because the market is once again bullish. That's causing this. And this is once again good for Tesla, bullish for Tesla. Microsoft went to my level. My level was 176.33. Uh, we closed that a little bit above it. So now I'm going to be watching about 280. I do believe we have the potential to get there. And I think I meant 276. I don't know if I just said the wrong number. 276, that zone right there. Google hit my level of 100. If we break 100, uh, if we break and hold 100 for tomorrow, we just maintain above it. This thing could fly to about 102. If it breaks that, I'll be watching 105 and 108. Overall, it's more bullish overall. And then for Amazon, looking a little more bullish, we broke above 100. If it keeps going, 104.8 is a real possibility. Uh, finally, 10-year Treasury yield came up a bit. This is oftentimes what's happening because of the European Central Bank. But we have a downtrend that's being respected right now. And this thing might come all the way back down to 33.69, which is where support is. This would be technically bullish for the stock market temporarily. And then finally, I think that's about it from my end. I'm now going to talk about Tesla. All right, so what's happening to Tesla? Let's go over the bullish and bearish case before I break down my prediction. Well, if you're bearish on Tesla... If you're bearish, hypothetically, and you need to be prepared for this just in case there's some bad piece of news or whatever, if that happens, I'm going to be watching this 183.5 area. That's where the first support's going to be. And if that fails, we have a lot of room to come all the way down to 180. All right, so make sure you watch those levels very carefully just in case there's some negative piece of news. Be prepared for it just in case. But if you're bullish on Tesla, if you think Tesla's going to keep going, as I mentioned earlier, we should fill this gap, come all the way up to the very high 180s. And then if we break it, I'm, I'm going to be watching 190. 190 is very important because from a Wyckoffian standpoint, it looks to me like if 190 does not stop Tesla, this thing could fly to 195. It's very possible based off this trend, this very nice accumulation that Tesla has right about here. So 190 is a real possibility, not all the way up here, sorry, 190, then 195 if we manage to break those levels. What do I think is going to happen tomorrow? Well, my prediction now, now that you are prepared for both the bullish and bearish cases, my prediction 
is Tesla's going to fill the gap tomorrow, get to the very high 180s. And as this happens, there, there are going to be a lot of buyers stepping in. And they're going to try to push this thing to almost 190. Now, I don't know if the shorts are going to come in very hard at 190 for like Monday or if Tesla is going to go all the way up to like 195. I'm not really sure how high it's going to go, but I do believe that we could see a continuation of this short squeeze on Tesla and in the markets. The odds favor that thanks to quadruple witching and thanks to the option chain, thanks to so many different factors. So once again, be prepared for anything just in case, but the odds favor, in my opinion, Tesla pushing to almost 190, filling the gap in the very high 180s and going all the way up to 190 for tomorrow. That's a pretty nice move. And I'm sure a lot of money could be made in the process. Nothing I said is financial advice. I just hope that I brought some value into your guys' lives. I want the best for everyone. Thank you so much. Tesla to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.